There is a place in the south of Peru, in the Andes Mountains. Actually, Andes Mountain is a long-range mountain. A certain portion of this mountain is also located in Cusco region of Peru. We can also say that the Cusco region of Peru lies on the foothills of the Andes Mountains. Cusco is a beautiful city. It was once the capital of the ancient Inca Empire. This place is known for its archaeological remains of the Inca Empire. In the 16th century AD, Peru was a Spanish colony. They ruled for over 250 years, so naturally, you will also get to see a lot of Spanish colonial architecture. By the way, this city is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The famous Machu Picchu is somewhere around 20 to 25 kilometers away from this city. If you look at this city from the top, it's made in the shape of a puma, because puma is considered a sacred animal for the locals. Anyhow, the main point of this video is, if you visit this place, here you'll find a mountain. It is called Mount Vinikunka. In the local language, it is referred to as Montana de Colores, which means a mountain of seven colors. This hill is one of the tourist attractions in Peru. So in this video, we will try and understand how did this mountain become the mountain of colors or rainbow mountain. So the first thing that you have to understand is that the elevation of this mountain is more than 5000 meters above sea level, which is way more than the average elevation of the overall Andes mountain. The highest peak of the entire Andes mountain is Mount Aconcagua in Argentina. And the height of this specific rainbow mountain, which is called Vinicunca, is more than 5000 meters. If you see, the snow line of any mountain will appear approximately after 4500 meters. That means this rainbow mountain is very much at a height where you will easily find some snow, if not fully covered snow. In Peru, you will find snow only on the high mountain tops. In the lower regions where the cities are located, there you will not find snow. During winters, you will find this rainbow mountain covered in little slow or small glaciers. And then we also know that after winters, when the temperature slowly increases, the snow and glaciers start to melt. In the case of this particular mountain, the snow will quickly dissipate due to its less quantity because this mountain is at the beginning of the snow line. When there is any melting of snow or glacier, there will be some drag on the upper layer of the soil that exists on the mountain, right? And then at the top of these mountains, we often find lakes. And then the whole mountain itself is nothing but minerals. Mountains are basically made up of sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic rocks. And these rocks are nothing but minerals. When there is a lake present on top of a mountain, just imagine, over a long period, lakes cause oxidation in rock minerals. Oxidation is the reaction of rock minerals with oxygen, thus changing the mineral composition of the rock. For example, when iron gets oxidized, it becomes red or rust colored. Similarly, at the side of a mountain, a lake cannot form, right? Water cannot accumulate at a steep side. That means there has to be a snow or glacier that can cover the side of a mountain. And that too for a good amount of time. Nature needs a lot of time to do its work. That is how oxidation in rock minerals will occur on the side of a mountain. Once snow and glacier melts away, and not just snow or glacier, even rivers, winds and rain, all these are natural ways of erosion. When that happens, the oxidized minerals are exposed. Since a mountain is made up of minerals, after oxidation, certain minerals react in a certain way. As I gave an example, when iron or ferrous minerals get oxidized, it becomes red or rust colored. That is how you see this band of red or rustic color. And then we can also see this yellowish color band. It could be due to the presence of sulfide minerals. Likewise, we also see a greenish color band. This could be due to chromium, manganese or silicate minerals like quartz, feldspar and mica. So these different bands of color denote the kind of minerals that have got oxidized. And at some point in time, the Vinikunka mountain was covered in snow and glacier. Wind, river, rain and slow movement of glaciers have exposed the oxidized mineral of this hill. So that is how Mount Vinikunka received its name as a rainbow mountain. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.